Welcome back to the lecture series of waste management. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss what are the different techniques of component separation. Because some elements of waste, we need to separate it. Maybe light particle or heavy particle or moderate particle. So how we can do the recovery? Okay, so sometimes uh, some valuable items might be there in the group of waste. We need to separate by using the following techniques. Depends on the weight, depends on the size of the particle, material, etc. As you can observe, there are following techniques which are available uh, to separate the components. We have uh, air separation, magnetic separation, and there are other methods like optical method. So we, we are going to discuss individually. I, in this video, mainly I am focusing on air separation. The rest of the method will be discussed in the remaining video. So I request you to uh, please focus on the air separation techniques. Here we require a compressor, like uh, it uh, sucks the air from uh, our surroundings and create heavy pressure, high pressure. So based upon that, we, we can separate the lighter particle uh, and moderate particle as well as the heavier particle. So air separation is a primarily used method for separating the material from lower material to heavier material. The light, you know that the lighter material will have lower density. The lower density particle will always go upper side where high density particle will be settled down because of gravitational force. So as we can see, uh, there are three methods which are comes under air separation. One is called a conventional tube type. Another is zigzag air classifier, ultimately open inlet vibrator type. So we are going to discuss about the sub methods such as the conventional tube method, zigzag air, air classifier, ultimately uh, the open uh, inlet vibrator type. How about the working of conventional tube type? Everybody can observe there is a simple schematic diagram of conventional tube type. So we have the components such as the rotary airlock. Okay, this is just like a motor. It's powered by a motor. Then there is a hinge joint. This is just for the support. And uh, as you can see, the direction of air flow. So air will be always flowing uh, downward, correct? So here, the thing is, uh, the rotary air clock will be operating continuously. It is powered by a motor. What you are going to do is, you will be inserting the shredded paste. This is your inlet. Please make a note of this. Whenever the motor is operated, the rotary air clock also getting operated and it produces the air. The air flow will be downside. Here, ultimately, the, uh, the fact is, the lighter particle will be going upper side, where the heavier particle will be settling down. So you can easily collect the heavier, heavier particle at the bottom, where lighter particle can be collected at the upper side. So uh, artificially, you are creating a cyclone. So this method is generally called as conventional tube type. Low density material will obviously go in the upper, upper side, where high density particle will go down. So this diagram you can draw in the examination and uh, for your presentation as well. Second method is called zigzag air classifier. What is the meaning of zigzag? That means uh, the movement of air from uh, like uh, the uh, like one point to another point in a zigzag fashion, in a random fashion. Okay, so here we can see like uh, the pipe with uh, different diameters. The first pipe you can see like a uh, fifteen uh, inch diameter, where the second pipe is having the uh, dimension of uh, twelve inch diameter. In the third pipe you can see again four inch. You can see like uh, whenever the pipe is moving from upper side to lower side, the diameter is drastically coming down. To adjust the pressure, we have manometer. To measure the pressure, we have the manometer. Of course, the pre pressure matters a lot here because pressure and volume both are inversely proportional. So first of all, what you are supposed to do is you will be inserting the heavy solid field. It may be solid waste. And there is a rotary air clock, which is powered by the motor. And uh, there is a like a throat dimension. It's a mechanical uh, segment. Like uh, it is arranged like a two inch uh, like uh, uh, length, like breadth is two inch and length is six inch, and uh, the throat angle is actually you can see the hatching that particular hatching that is designed by sixty degree. It's a mechanical part. Okay, so how uh, it is designed because the air has to be moved in just like in a cyclic fashion, or we can say like a zigzag pattern. That is what uh, the throat angle is maintained as sixty degree. So we will we'll be generating the air with the help of rotary airlock field, then uh, creating the movement of air in a zigzag fashion. Uh, ultimately, the thing is uh, that uh, we have arranged the duct in a different diameter. So with respect to the size of the material, it is getting filtered out. Ultimately, uh, the uh, lower, the light item will be uh, collected uh, at, the, at the bottom side where the diameter of this particular duct is 4 inch where the heavier particle will be uh, collected at the 
proper portion where the diameter of this duct is 15 inch diameter. Air, uh, like uh, the rest of the air will be passed outside. We need to maintain the balance. Okay. So ultimately, it has to maintain the equilibrium. So ultimately, you are, what you are going to do is you will be collecting uh, the different type of material with respect to the depth size. Right. So this is known as uh, like a air uh, classifier. So how you are going to create the, the, the zigzag move movement of air because uh, the design of this particular throttle. Hope the concept is very clear to everybody. Yeah. So this is regarding zigzag air classifier. You can directly explain, draw the diagram and you can directly mention. Any confusion you can put up in the comment box. I am happy to answer back. Third one is uh, open inlet vibrator type. As you already know that whenever you are creating a vibration, vibration is something like a pressure or a force, correct? If you create a vibration, what is going to happen is uh, the material will be sorted out at the bottom side. First of all, we require a fan. Okay, here there is a fan or we call it as blower. Then there is a vibrator motor. It will operate continuously, vibrator. Okay, flow. to and fro it is going to operate. So the thing is, you are going to insert uh, the waste here. And uh, in, uh, in addition to that, airflow also will be provided continuously. And uh, in parallel, you are uh, operating the motor because of the vibration, what, what will happen, you know, the heavy, the items that is going to be separated out at the bottom side. Okay, the light item will go upper side. Along with the air, the light item will come upside. Okay, so this, this is basically the principle of vibration uh, as well as inertial force, correct? You are making use of the inertial force here. Okay, so that is regarding uh, open inlet vibrator. Here, the motor plays the crucial role, okay? Also, the air pressure. So, pressure is required. Because high pressure, that will create less volume. Pressure, P is inversely proportional to volume. That principle also obeying here. While separating the uh, like uh, the waste, we need to consider uh, air uh, the material called the method called air separation. The following factors are considered for selection of air separator. What are the factors? Please make a list. The list is given as first of all you have to take care of the characteristics of material. Uh, like uh, liquid type of waste, it is not viable. If you are talking about the separation of liquid type material, it is not at all viable. Then uh, waste uh, transfer you are supposed to consider. Okay, what kind of transfer method you are adopting? Similarly, the operational characteristics also matters a lot. So one of the parameters called the reliability. Then site concentration, like the space, noise, environmental limitations, all the things you are supposed to consider before procurement of air separator equipment. Also, the area where you are establishing this type of uh, material that is also matters a lot. Uh, in this session, I discussed about the first method of air, first method of uh, like a component separation called the air separation. Uh, in that air separation, there are sub-methods called the conventional two type, zigzag air classifier and the open inlet vibrator. And also I could explain the brief operation of each uh, sub-classification method. If you have any queries, uh, please let me know. Uh, I can address you. Uh, in, in the coming session, I'm going to discuss about the magnetic separator and other methods. Thank you very much for watching this video. Happy learning. Have a great day.